Now let's get into some immediate stuff with obviously games kicking off tomorrow, but the round of 64 kicking off Friday. Let's look at some possible upsets, some possible Cinderella's, some teams that will break your bracket. What is one team? What's a matchup in the first round that you're looking at? I think in the first round, just based off of what they did in their last game, I kind of like Georgetown over Colorado. Georgetown didn't just beat uh, Creighton in the Big East championship game. They destroyed them. It was unbelievable to see, you know, 13 and 12 team just going into Madison Square Garden and just destroying Creighton. And it'll be interesting to see Patrick Ewing coaching in his first tournament. Uh, Col- they play Colorado. I think Georgetown could spoil a lot of brackets. If you're picking an upset round one, I got to go Georgetown. All right. I'm going to actually strongly disagree with you here. I gave out this spread actually on the college basketball podcast for Colorado. I think that people are kind of overlooking them and I feel like they kind of did get under a little bit. They lost to Oregon state in the PAC 12 championship game. They won six of seven to end the season. They shoot 37% from three. They have some veterans. This is an old squad, McKinley, Wright, Jariah horn. So this is a team that is, you know, experienced and, Georgetown, it's kind of weird for me to say because Patrick Ewing is my NBA franchise's best player. Obviously, we heard about that little dispute where security was all over him. He was like, what are you doing? I own this place. This is MSG. My, look at my jersey. It's right there. Um, but for that them to go on that run, I feel like they kind of – they got – they did figure out something, but they figured something out against some weak talent. You know, Marquette, Seton Hall, both disappointed a ton this year. The Nova win was great. I'm not going to dispute that. But Villanova is really on the downward right now. Um, a ton of injuries. Their senior guard, Connor Gillespie, really the engine of that team was out. He'll be out for the tournament too, which is why Nova fell to a five seed. And obviously that win against Creighton was awesome. And we talked about earlier, you know, Creighton has their own issues. But I'm not, listen, I'm not going to just just disrespect anything here because this team is hot, right? I'm not going to say they're not. But that is an interesting one. Um, I think a lot of people are picking it. I don't think that's a crazy pick at all because of how hot they are. And every year we do see 12, five upsets. So that could be the one I'm going to go bold here as well, Brian, I'm going to go Ohio over UVA. So I talked about earlier in the uh, West region, I called in the, in the pre-show, you know, the two through four, the fraud, it's the fraud region, just with the two through four seeds. I'm not really sold on them. UVA. I talked about earlier, majority of the players are in quarantine till tomorrow. Uh, they can play with only five guys if needed to be. Let's hope that doesn't happen. And it's not even just about the quarantine. You know, they'll obviously be shaky. It's about this Ohio University team. I know they're a 13 seed. They were also the last 13 seed to make the Sweet 16. But they've won nine of 10. And they have a legit star in Jason Preston. And this is a guy that, like, if they win the game, everyone's going to be talking about him the next day because he's going to have to ball out. And the way that they play, I think, is a matchup nightmare kind of for UVA because while UVA is good at offense, they are really slow paced and Ohio university is 29th best offense in the country. They run an above average tempo. So if they kind of kick that up a little bit, they run a faster pace. They're going to catch a UVA team who one doesn't run a fast pace anyway. And two is coming off a rusty quarantine. You know, they haven't played in over a week. They didn't even look great last week, all season long UVA, their big wins were really against UNC and Clemson who were, you know, those are seven, eight seeds. So th- that's not anything special. It's a 13 four. So it's a little bold, but I do like Ohio university to make some noise to shock some people. I'm just not bought on this UVA team at all. Yeah, no, I agree with you. When I was uh, going through some upsets, I, I had Ohio as well. And I think this is more based off of circumstance. I mean, Virginia, it's very unfortunate what's going on with, with yeah. them, with the quarantine and everything. And I think the fact that they haven't played in over a week, that's really going to affect them. And they could have a a limited roster. There could be undermanned. And I just think Ohio can really take advantage of the situation. And I think this just really goes to show how big of a role COVID can play in this tournament more than ever. I mean, March Madness is unpredictable as itself to begin with, but now you throw COVID in there, you could have have players test positive. Teams could, you know, be undermanned. I really think that, this is going to be one of the wildest, unpredictable March Madness brackets in history. Yeah, I mean, shout out to John Rossi and his saying for college basketball is where the unexpected becomes ordinary. And this is certainly what college basketball is all about. And in a year like this, so unprecedented, it's going to play an even bigger factor. Um, 
you know, we hope that during the tournament, everything stays like it is. But as we mentioned earlier, Kansas is leading rebounders out. You know, that's an issue where it's a COVID issue. Like you can't control that. They had to bow down of the big 12 tournament. And that's another reason where maybe they're a two seed if they're able to win that and play Texas and play Oklahoma state. So you do look at it from that aspect and it certainly is a massive question mark. COVID is going to play a huge role. I hope that it doesn't, but I don't think we can avoid the reality 